In a previous video, we set up a 2.7 inch e-paper hat to work with a Raspberry Pi 4. I wanted to take things further and use it to display the contents of one of my favorite websites, which is called Shower Thoughts. Specifically, I wanted to scrape the website and get a piece of JSON formatted text to display on the screen. Using a couple of built-in modules in Python, I was able to get the data and show it on the e-paper display. Here's how I did it. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. They're currently offering a great deal. $2 for PCB prototypes of any color. They have a great variety of options for your PCBs and the resulting products are great. You can also get the corresponding stencils and with great facilities and wonderful people, I highly recommend JLC PCB. You've probably heard about Reddit, which it hails itself as the front page of the internet. There is over a million communities known as subreddits, each of which covers a different topic. One of my favorite ones is called Shower Thoughts, and it covers those miniature epiphanies that you may have while carrying out a routine task like showering, driving, or daydreaming. There are many, many entries submitted by users every single day, and I wanted to show the top ones on my e-paper display. For this video, I'm going to use the Raspberry Pi 4, the micro SD card that we set up in another video, a 2.7 inch e-paper hat that we've also set up previously in another video, as typical I'll also use a USB keyboard, and this time around I'll add a protective case for the Raspberry Pi 4. I'll also use a micro HDMI cable connected to my HDMI monitor, and a USB-C power supply. Setting things up is pretty straightforward. You can find many of these components in my little Amazon shop or using the links in the description of the video. With everything assembled and plugged in, I'll go ahead and press the on button of the power supply. As we've done before, I'll go to the GitHub page for getting the code that will allow me to control the e-paper display. I'll copy the link and using a terminal, I'll use the command git clone with the link to download the code repository. Next, I'll make a copy of the folder for the specific model of the e-paper display that I have. I'll use the file explorer to go into this directory and open up the main.py file that we'll need to modify in order to show what we want on the screen. I'll start modifying the code to get rid of everything that I won't need for this particular tutorial. And as I said, instead of clicking the run button, I can simply open a terminal window, go into the directory, and use the command python to run the script that we just modified. And once we run it, we're able to see that everything is working properly, and the red image from the example is displayed on our e-paper screen. To save some time, I've created an image of my own with a logo and the name of the website that I want to display on the screen. Notice that for this screen, the image needs to be 176 by 264 pixels. I'll go ahead and copy it onto the directory so that it's easier to access by our Python script. I'll test things out and display this image instead of the example image we were displaying before. With everything working correctly, now it's time to get the text that we want to display accompanying this image. I'll go back to Reddit, we can see that from the many entries that users submit, we can get the ones that were submitted in the past hour, and more importantly, if we add .json to the URL, we're able to get the data in JSON format. 
If you're not used to looking at this data, it might get a little bit confusing. So you can use online tools to format them and make things easier to visualize. In the code, the first thing we'll need is to issue a get request to get that JSON formatted data. We'll use the built-in module request to do so. We'll split up the URL and its parameters into two separate variables. And then using the get method of the request module, we'll issue that request. We need to include a headers argument because the default one has been overused and ready blocks it. So you can come up with a different user agent name and make sure that you limit your request to once every few seconds. Once we have the data, we can use the JSON method of a string in order to parse it as a Python dictionary. For now, I'll go ahead and print it onto a terminal window so that we can see that we're actually getting the data. Now that we have the entire JSON string, we can see the actual part that we need. The keys that I'll need are data, children, which is an array. So in its zeroth member, I'll need to grab something called data. And inside of that, there is the key title. The value of that key is what I need to send to the ePaper display. This is pretty straightforward to do in JSON, but just to make sure, I'll once again print it out to the terminal window. Now that that's working, I'll need one last thing. As the Python library for the ePaper display doesn't wrap strings, I need to do the formatting myself. For this, I'll use the built-in module called TextWrap. I'll create a wrapper that is 35 characters wide. I'll wrap the data and that'll split it into strings that are a certain width. Using the join method of a string, I'll add a break line character to the end of each line. To show you how that works, I'll print it out one last time to the terminal window. Now that I have the data ready, I'll choose the free sans bold font with a size of 15. Then I'll use the draw string add method of the ePaper display library to send that formatted piece of text to the screen. As I'll need to rotate the display so that the text orients itself accordingly, I'll first display the image and then display the string. So now when I run the script, I can see that the image pops up first and then the text that we scrape from the Shower Thoughts website. As I want to get the top shower thought of the past hour, I need the script to run every 60 minutes. I could make a loop that just leaps for 60 seconds and run it in the background, but actually instead of doing that, I'm going to show you a different way. There is a built-in process into the Linux operating system called cron that runs different tasks periodically. I'll make an entry for my user so that a task runs every hour and executes the Python script that I just created. I'll use the command cron tab with the option E for editing. And first I'll have it run every minute so that I can see that it's actually working. The command that I want to run is first change into the directory where the script lives and then use Python to run that script. I can verify that that entry made it into the cron process by issuing the command cron tab L. As a sanity check, I can copy the command from the entry onto a terminal window and see it actually working. If that looks good, I just need to wait a minute and see it in action again. If that also looks good, I'll go ahead and change one last time that cron entry to run at the zeroth minute of every hour of every day. So if I wait until the turn of the next hour, I should be able to see the top shower thought for the next period. So there you have it. Really quickly, we've used Python to scrape data from a website and display it on an e-paper screen. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two that really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos, and I will see you next time.